We shall be changed. There is a blessed time that's coming soon when we shall be changed. The Bible gives us such hope. And that hope perseveres beyond the events and the cares and the troubles of this life. Yes. I'm glad for that because if, if in this life only we had hope in Christ, if this was all of it, if there was no heaven, if there was no rapture, if there was no hereafter, if there was not a heavenly home, whew, I think most of us are very impressed with the troubles we have, <laughs> the pains you have. Do I have an amen? amen. <laughs> Some, sometimes I get so tired of this world. The things that are going on in this world. This is not a message that is just for old people. This is really the truth for every one of us. Every one of us. In fact, the Bible says in the last days, even the young people will grow weary and, and faint. And the reason is there's so many troubles going on around us and so many things that are happening. We, we begin to sense our limitations and our... I thank God that there is something beyond what we're going through. Hallelujah. I believe and I hope that I'm speaking the truth that every one of you in this room have already experienced the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank if you haven't, it's available right now. All you have to do is repent of your sins. God is faithful to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all your transgressions. Absolutely. For every one of us who have experienced this new life that is in Christ Jesus, this corruptible flesh is headed for a dramatic change. We're going to be changed. Yes, we are. Those of us who have not accepted Christ as Savior, and I hope and pray again, there are none of you that are listening to me that have not accepted Jesus as your Savior. You're also headed for some dramatic changes. I like the changes that are prepared for the redeemed of the Lord much better than the changes that are coming for those that are not saved. That's right. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. Verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. We're already headed for some dramatic changes. I'm not talking about the changes that are going on or that are occurring in your body as you are maturing and growing older. Do any of you recognize that you're not 16 anymore? <laughs> some of us don't know. And that's okay. <laughs> Some of the changes are very dramatic. Yes. Uh, many of us had dreams and plans for our life, and some of those have not been fulfilled. Is that true for anybody? You thought you were going to be something that you did not end up being. <sighs> Whatever your aspirations and your hopes were, something happened. The Bible tells us that we're really headed for a gigantic, a dramatic, great change that is going to change us, not as age has changed us, but it's going to change us in a way that is not like just aging and getting older. I want to talk to you today about that change that the Bible says that in a moment, 
in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. You see, God has plans for your future. He has plans for your future that you're going to experience. And these changes are not the experiences that you're going to have in this life. First Corinthians 15 and verse 53, it says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Corruption means perishing or dying. Since sin was introduced into the world, there has been a problem with death and dying. Every one of us have experienced a, a degree of that in our life. Some people assume that the next great change that's going to come is death. And if that's all that you're looking for, Solomon had an idea about that. If, if all that's going to happen is death is the next thing, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you're going to die. Just throw a party every day and live it up because when you finish living it up, you're going to the grave. That's not the end of things. The Bible tells us when we die, our spirit goes to be with the Lord. Right. When the text says, and we shall be changed, it's not talking about death. It's talking about this change that is going to take place. This change that is coming to every one of us. God has instructed us to have hope for a better day. A better day is coming. A day when the things that we have been living in and with in this life, they're going to be changed dramatically. The Bible says this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. What does that mean? Let's go to the next verse. It will help us. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. In the book of Revelation chapter six, we're told of a place under the altar in heaven, under near the throne of God, where the soul of the redeemed by the blood of the lamb, by the blood of Christ will go. We're seeing an image of those there that were martyred for their faith and they're under the altar in the presence of God. You know, when you die, your spirit or your soul, that part of your being is going to a place called paradise. It is under the altar in the presence of God, near to God. Hallelujah. We're told there in the book of Revelation that those there that were martyred saints are going to receive white robes. So there's something about the soul of man that is, it, it's different than what you are right now. It's not the resurrected body. You're, they're going to go and be in the presence of God, but they do not have that resurrected body. Now, what we're hearing here in Corinthians is not that. It's not the separation of your soul and your body. There's coming a day when your soul and your body is going to be reunited and you will have a new body. Yes. Hallelujah. We have hope that this corruptible body will put on incorruption and this mortal body will put on immortality. When that takes place, the scripture says death will be swallowed up in victory. You see, God has plans for your eternal soul and for a, a new body, your body. Second Corinthians five and verse one. I put it in the New Living Translation because it's a lot clearer than what we get from some of our other translations. It says, for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down. That is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. There's good news in this verse for us. Yes. 
When we are resurrected, we're going to have an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. I don't want to go to heaven and have this old body. I want to have a new body. Wouldn't it be terrible to spend eternity with all of the pains and troubles and aches and difficulties of this old body? I can't imagine going to heaven and having arthritis and having neuritis and having heart problems and brain problems and eye problems. We'll have a new body. Praise the Lord. I want to go to heaven and experience a relief from suffering and from sickness and weakness and pain and sin and all of the things that we contend with every day down here. This body is corruptible and it dies, but God has prepared for us. It's already ready. God has prepared for us a new body. Yes, Second Corinthians 5, 2. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. How many of you get weary and tired of your old body? Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes we hurt and we groan. I don't know about any of you, but I hear this sometimes at night in the bed. Oh. <laughs> and I'm not talking about anyone else but myself. <laughs> sometimes we suffer and we get sick. Some of you have noticed that recently. You've been sick. I don't like getting sick. I don't like being weak. One of these days, we're going to die. The Bible says that it's appointed unto men once to die. Every one of us are going to die. The only way you will not die is if the rapture of the church takes place and you miss death. And I would be happy if that would happen right now and every one of us would just be taken and be in the presence of the Lord. But one day we will die and our spirit will go to be with God. God is prepared right now to make some changes. And he has the power to do it. Verse 3 says, for we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. So those that are under the altar in heaven who have a spiritual body, a spirit body, they're going to have a day of change. All of those who've gone on before. How many of you have lost loved ones? What I mean, some who have died and gone on before. You know that one of these days, do you not, that they're going to have a new body and they'll have a new life and we will be together in the Lord's presence forever and ever. Hallelujah. In that brand new body, we shall be changed. One of these days, a, a trump, the trump of God will sound. And the dead in Christ will rise incorruptible, will have a new body. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall, we shall, we shall be changed. You're headed for a change. You know, there's a lot of speculation about what our heavenly and eternal body is going to be like. And a lot of people don't have a clue what it's going to be like. Well, if you want to know, Jesus' resurrection gives us the best example of what a resurrected body is going to be like. After his death, Jesus came out of the grave. You remember, mortality was swallowed up by life and death had been conquered. The change was very dramatic. The disciples had gone to the grave. They were expecting a dead body. They were going to put uh, some new spices and wrap him again and, and make sure that he was prepared for, for the afterlife, whatever that may mean. But all of a sudden, when they got there, Jesus was resurrected. He was alive. He was not dead. 
You you remember when the disciples were walking down the road to Emmaus and Jesus was walking with them all of a sudden. And they said, our hearts did burn when he was with us. Well, later when Jesus met with them, those that were on the road to Emmaus and the rest of the disciples were all gathered together. Suddenly Jesus appeared in the midst of them and he said, peace be to you. And they were terrified and frightened because they, they knew the doors had been locked and the windows had been barred and they were hidden away and they thought they were seeing a spirit. Jesus said in Luke 24 and verse 38, why are you frightened? He asked, why are your hearts filled with doubt? He said, look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost or a spirit because spirits or ghosts do not have bodies as you see that I do. Verse 40, as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Verse 41, still they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he ate. He ate it as they watched. We will have a body that will be like unto Jesus' body. We shall be changed. The disciples were so amazed at what they were seeing that they couldn't believe their eyes. What they were witnessing was so different than the last time they saw him. When they saw him the last time, he was suffering. He was bleeding. He was dying. He was wounded. He was bruised. He was crucified. He was buried in a grave. He was left there in the grave. But now this same Jesus who was taken from them by death had come back to life. Hallelujah. He, is, he is alive and in their presence. His resurrection body gives us some answers to questions that we have death could not hold him there's good news friends if you die there is hope that death will not hold you in the grave whatever may happen to your body hallelujah death cannot hold you god has a body prepared he had when jesus had a literal tangible body of flesh and bones it looked the same, but it was different. It changed. He was able to communicate with them in the same manner. And they, in fact, after they got over the shock of it, they were able to recognize that it is truly Jesus. Yes. There's good news in that. One of these days when we are resurrected, we're going to look around and we're going to say there's Lucy and there's Joe and there's Pete and there's we're going to know one another. You're going to know your mother and dad who've gone on to be with the Lord. You're going to know your brother and sister who have died and gone on to be with the Lord. You're going to know even the disciples who've gone on and, and they're with the Lord. It's a glorious day that is prepared. Hallelujah. He ate some broiled fish and honeycomb. I don't know if that means anything to you, but it, it means that his body was not just a spirit body. There, he, he could eat. I don't know if it's going to be necessary or uh, we I've heard of the marriage supper of the lamb and I've thought about it many times. In fact, the first sermon I preached when I was called into the ministry as, as an early teenager was about the marriage supper of the lamb. And I had it in my teenage mind that when we get to heaven, we're going to have the juiciest turkey bones, turkey leg, and we're going to sit there and we're going to munch on turkey in heaven. I don't know why I cho chose turkey. <laughs> but there's something about going to heaven that's going to be so familiar that it will not be odd to us to be in the presence of God in our new body. They thought they were having hallucinations. In other words, when it happens, it's going to be somewhat unreal to us that we will not realize, really, there has been a glorious change. 
In fact, this change that is coming, this resurrection that is coming, is really of so much, much utmost uh, to our faith and to our Christian life that I think every one of us need to get this in our spirit and mind. You're headed for a change. You're headed for a change. This body that you have right now is not the end of it. Death is not the end of it. If in Christ you have hope only in this life, your faith is useless. And really, 1 Corinthians says we're still guilty of our sins. Here's the good news. Jesus died on the cross. That's right. He suffered for you, but he arose on the third day and Jesus is alive. He's at the right hand of the father. He's making intercession for us. And because Jesus Christ has conquered death, you one of these days, you who have faith in the Lord, one of these days, you're coming up out of this world. Hallelujah. Whether you die or whether you are alive, one of these days we're headed for a change. First Thessalonians 4 and 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him, with him, same thing, with him, those who sleep in Jesus are those who have died in faith in Jesus. Verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Hallelujah. With the voice of the archangel yes. and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Yes. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall forever be with the Lord. We'll have a new body. Yes. And we'll have a new life. I want you to pay attention to those words with the Lord. This is our hope that we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye immediately and we will be changed and we will be with Christ. We shall be changed. Philippians 3 and 20 says, for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior of the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. That verse is very important. It talks about right now and it also talks about what's going to happen. He's able to help you right now in this life, but he's able to conform, change, transform your body that you have right now to be changed into the likeness of his glorious body. You know, that's a glorious change that's coming. One of these days, we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Revelation 5, verse 9 through 10 shows the host of the redeemed around the throne of God. In verse 9, it says... And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us by God. You have redeemed us by God, by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Think about this just a moment. One of these days, the trumpet will sound and something's going to happen. Jesus is going to step out of glory and will call the redeemed of the Lord home. And those who have died will be raised and be given a new body. And we who are alive will be changed in a moment at the twinkling of an eye. And all of a sudden, we shall be changed and we shall be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you get your mind around that? Can you get your mind around that today? I'm so tired of this world. 
I'm so tired of the things that we have suffered down here. The losses, the sicknesses, the hurts. Dear one today, change your focus. I remember, I remember a lot of things, but I remember specifically in the early church, they spoke a lot about this. A lot of their songs were about this. One of these days, one of these days we're going to vacate this place and we're going home to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing with me, will you please? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Takes me by the hand, he leads me through. Hallelujah. Oh, what a day, a glorious day. 